welcome back to another video my name is sparkman i'm a game developer i create games for just about any game system out there today i bring you a brand new video today we're gonna have a quick peek at uh, what fusion 3 is going to look like oh this is super exciting guys we've been waiting for this for a long time we haven't done fusion videos here but but in my new channel you can find fusion tutorials i'm going to upload all my uh, classic fusion videos so let's uh see what this looks like and here is what it looks like this is Anas from Click Team, the lead developer of Fusion 3. Today we're going to show you a sneak peek of Fusion 3. Now he's the main developer of Fusion game. So far in our development, we've mostly been working on Nucleus, a framework which is the core of Fusion 3 in Fusion 3 games. Nucleus, okay. I heard of that stuff before, it's uh, like C++ stuff. Super advanced stuff. Nucleus has been in development for four years and we're confident it's become one of the most advanced 2D game engines. This is the interface for Fusion 3. Many things will surely be changed and added before the final release. Our editor is fully cross-platform. This is running on Mac, but the editor also runs on Windows and Linux. So it's gonna be cross-platform, which is awesome. For this screen resolution, the text might be a bit hard to read. I'm going to start. Our interface is resolution independent. Since Fusion 3 runs on the same technology as the games made with it, your own games and apps can support this as well very easily. So basically it will be like a website. Responsive. If your resolution is small, it will shrink. And if your resolution is super big, it is going to expand. How nice is that? That's awesome. Our user interface should be familiar to our Fusion 2.5 users, but we have simplified it quite a bit. The interface is also fully user themable, so you can make your own changes to the appearance of the editor. So you will be able to make your own themes, which is awesome. I like that. I, I like it so far, because I usually make my own themes. That was one of my things in uh, Fusion uh, 2.5, I used to make my own... Uh, themes and not share them with anyone so wow how selfish well your own apps and games get of course also access to this theming feature so that you can match the appearance of the interface elements to the visual style of your game today we're going to re-implement a small part of the saucer squad game that is showcased for this weekend's game jam weird stuff this weekend's game jam i've never heard of that but uh i'm probably going to check it out but with some new fusion 3 flat here new application well let me see what this looks like so that's uh the name of the app right here and um come that example new app so this is directed to android which is good i guess ios as well exporters localization advanced images sound effects fonts okay that's that's good that's good that's looking good I'm going to start by changing the name of this app to saucer squad saucer squad Okay, this is the editor where you drag your objects, I guess. Layers on the side. Throwing this thingy. And what is this here? I don't know what that is. I almost want to click on this. I don't know what this is. I'm going to change the background color of the frame to black. Uh, I don't like that. You should be able to just select a color from a uh, color palette or something. Like, a, like Photoshop. But that's okay, I guess. The number's cool. Wait a second, where did this come from? Insert a few tiles from the Source Squad library. Okay, this is from the library. It has a library just like the previous Fusion. Now my question would be, are they actually 3D or are they just uh, pictures? Now we could implement this the exact same way here in Fusion 3, but what would be the fun of that? For this video, we want to show a glimpse of where Fusion 3 differs from 2.5. I'm going to show you a new feature called Shapes. Shapes? Okay, this is new. This wasn't in the last version. That you can use in the most common object, the sprite, also known as the active object. Active objects? From Fusion 2.5. Quarter cir circle, quarter circle, triangle, hexagon. Oh, cool. And the shape from the common square to certain different shapes. Son of a... Awesome. I'm going to select the isometric cube. Isometric cube. Also for this tile. Iso cube. So this doesn't look much like an asymmetric cube. No, it doesn't. Um, I was going to say that. But uh, we believe you. For you any longer, where this does. But I'm going to show you why in a second. Okay, good, because I was starting to worry there for a second. As you may have noticed, only one of the tiles changed shape, even though I have multiple instances of this tile in the play area. This is because of a new feature in Fusion 3. For some objects, 
you want different values at the start of your frame than the rest. Okay. Two point five. There are only one property that could be unique per instance, the position of the object. All other properties were shared between all other of the same type. In Fusion 3, however, if the property is supported, you can set an individual value instance if you wish. In this case, the shape is not shared among the instances, so you can choose a different one for each one of you. No, just like a game maker and a construct, which is good. I was waiting for something like that. For your games, it could be anything, any property. Could be different scale, health level, rotation, and more. So, for example, I can change the scale of one object, and the other ones will be. Yeah, because if you scale something here, you will even scale in the library here, which will piss you off really bad when you were making games in the previous version of Fusion. I can't even say Fusion. F Fusion. You remain unaffected. And I change this back to one. Let me just rearrange those two. Okay, there could be a feature called Auto Grid. You can select them all, hit Auto Grid, and they all line up. That 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 would be pretty handy. Did it is? Oh, it's sort of 3D. Check it out. Is he running this on a Mac? I think he's using a Macintosh. I recognize the buttons: green, yellow, and red. I think red is um. I think red would be like close, and this would be like um. I don't know. Let's continue. Okay, you can see that, that nothing happens. Did I turn it? Did I turn down the volume? Macintosh, always hiding the buttons. Don't hide the buttons. Hiding the buttons is bad. All right. And now for the fun part. Drum roll, please. I'm going to go to the event editor. I can go directly there from this button. Oh, look at that. I was wondering where the other three little buttons went. Right next to the frame. Click so on this it. This is the event editor in Fusion 3. It looks exactly just like the event editor from Fusion 2.5. Okay, but um, I see an extra flying saucer on it. Let's continue. It looks very much like what you're used to. Without I just said that. There are several improvements despite us being early in development. Yeah, yeah I, I should mention guys, this is not the final final thingy. I'm assuming since um, Click Team is already showing it, this is probably very close to what the final product is going to look like. So, very exciting news. I've used Fusion 2.5 and earlier. You might recognize most of these default objects here at the top, with the exception of a new one. New one. The Flying Thother. The Flying Thother is the new one. The layer icon. Oh, layers. Uh, I used to use a, um, what do you call it? An extension. Drop it here, and that's how I used to control the layers from here. Each layer in your frame will now be directly accessible like an object in the event editor. This allows you to directly control each layer without having to meddle with the layer object, like in 2.5. So this layer represents this one. Yeah, we got that. I'm going to start by adding a start of frame event. I'm going to scroll to the position of my UFO. As you might have noticed, the scroll to position action from the frame storyboard control object has been moved to the layer object. This means that you can scroll up your layers completely independently. Okay. You have options to have layers follow the scroll settings from of another layer for the ease of use if you want to, like Fusion 2.5 style parallax scrolling. That's fancy. I'm going to add a new always event. Here I'm going to use the new set user matrix. Matrix! This has the matrix in it. Whoa! What is all this? I'm going to offset this layer half of the content size of my layer, which defaults to the frame height. Zero. We'll see why in a minute. Okay, because that was like, what? What is this stuff? All right, we're with you. Press the play button. Press the play button. Oh, another matrix again. Math for F. Multiply. Math for F. Rotation. 45 degrees, zero. Okay. So now what? Use matrix again. Multiply. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Mad 4F again. Content size. Y divided by two, zero. For Z. Oh, error message. Qu'est-ce que se passe ici? Qu'est-ce que se a passé? There you go. So now, okay, so let's try it out. Now I'm going to add another always event. Another always offset this UFO. To begin with, I'm gonna set the user matrix to 
to the rotation, which is the inverse of the of the layers. I guess not to get confused because they, if you put it in the same one, I guess uh, it will be the same thing, but uh, it's less confusing. This is why I think he's doing this. Rotation minus 45 degrees instead of 45 degrees, and I'm gonna translate it afterwards. Matt for F. Zero zero. 150. I'm gonna multiply these two together. Okay, so well, what's going on now? Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, nothing happens except for the angle is changed, and um, and that's where the video ends. Okay, so. Um, what 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 happened there? I mean, I okay. You can see that the angle changed for the um, for the box, which suggests that it's sort of 3D. Okay, so this must be some sort of vector uh, object in the flying saucers, 3D object or something. Okay, and that's where the video ends, guys. Um, it looks very good. So uh, I think it changed the camera. Right now, the camera is uh, facing um, another uh, direction. So let me just check out original. And now for the fun part. And here is the final result. Okay, guys. All right, guys. So that's a sneak preview of what Fusion 3 is going to look like. What do you think? Okay, guys. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, what do you think Clickteam should add to uh, Fusion 3? They're not finished yet. They probably will see this video. I don't know if they will. So far, I like the layout and the colors and everything looks more modern. I think it's going to be good. Um, Okay, don't quote me on it, but uh, I heard around that this will be released around Christmas, okay? I don't know, I don't know, it's not official. I don't claim to know, but uh, I... It, it could be leaked information, guys, I don't know, I mean, it is... I mean, it could be even before, but the fact that they're actually showing a preview already, uh, it must mean that they are getting very close to uh, finishing Fusion. This thing has been on the making for a couple of years, so... Uh, and as you heard from the beginning, uh, they are taking this thing from the ground up, okay? It's not even the same engine in the background. It's uh, Atom. Is it Atom? I'm pretty sure he said Atom. So far in our development, we've mostly been working on Nucleus, a framework which is the core of Fusion 3. Okay, Nucleus. He's, I thought he said Atom. Okay. So there you go. There is what Fusion 3 is going to look like. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I think I said that already. Uh, yeah, don't forget to share and like this video. Uh, also, there is a bell next to the subscribe button. Click on the bell. And YouTube will let you know when my next video comes out. And if you want to see uh, Fusion tutorials, uh, head out to my other channel, Spark World. And subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.
better than that.